So basically, what do we have? Um, the white circles are tangent to each other as you go around. So K1 is tangent to K2, is tangent to K3, is tangent to K4, is tangent to K1. Okay. And the points of tangency are the red points A, B, C, and D. All right. So this is what we are given. So everyone knows what, when two circles are tangent, when they share only one point in common. All right. And so what problem five is asking is to prove that these red points, A, B, C, and D, are, and here come the technical words from last time, concyclic or collinear. So since this is on the handout of inversion, we should probably use inversion, right? From last time, we had a circle given in our Ptolemy's theorem, and we wanted to reduce the circle to a line. Yes. So where did we place the center of inversion? Anywhere. Anywhere on the circle would do the trick. Anywhere, if I call this O, then inversion is going to map this circle into some line. So inversion is just some kind of transformation of the plane, like reflection and tra or translation. But as opposed to reflection, translation, and rotation, inversion does funny things to shapes. It changes them. So a circle may not be a circle after inversion, and a line may not be a line after inversion. OK, and all depends where is the center of inversion. The idea of Ptolemy's theorem was kill the circle, the given circle, make it into a line, because we would rather work with lines than with circles. On the line, everything is very simple. On the circle, things are complicated. To do this, if you want to kill a circle, place the center of inversion on it, and that does the trick. So then we are in the second situation. A central circle goes into a line. Okay. Hmm, back to problem five. So once again for the newcomers, the white circles are tangent pairwise to each other as you go around. And the points of tangency are the red points A, B, C, and D. Okay, and we are supposed to show that these four points lie either on a circle, as I have drawn in this yellow circle here, or they lie on a line. Okay, it's hard to imagine how they lie on a line unless you draw the exact picture. But it is possible. It's a challenge for you to try at home, drawing four circles so that the points lie on a line. Okay, so how do we prove this? Well, let's simplify the picture as much as we can. Okay, so we are looking for which point to be? The center of inversion, so speak loud. Okay, so we want to find which is the best choice for center of inversion all, right? We want to kill as many circles as possible, right? So suggestions, where should I place O? Any points in those A, B, C, D? That's right. Why, for example, would I, is point, uh, which one? A, good. Because what would happen after inversion if I say, let O be point A? Okay, which circles will be killed, basically? Will be transformed? <laughs> K1 and K4. K4. K1 and K4 would turn into lines, right? Let's write this down. If O coincides with point A, for example, circles K1 and K4 will be transformed into lines. But what kind of lines? There are two types of lines. Non-central non lines, okay. Into non-central lines. 
and let's give them names to these non-central lines. L1 for where K1 would go and L4 for where K4 would go. Okay? Before I draw anything, tell me what happens to the other two circles, K2 and K3. Non-central circles. Non circles. No, they go to some other non-central circles. Well, we can't kill all the circles because we can't find the point that lies on all of the circles. Right? So two are killed, two are, trans uh, two are transferred into other circles. So let's write this down. Circles K2 and K3 go into some other non-central circles, and let's call them, I shouldn't call them L2 and L3 because L kind of stands for a line. So let's call them K2 bar and K3 bar. Okay, so now we want to draw the picture. I'm going to give you a hint and then I will group you in twos and see what you're going to produce with that picture. So don't try to cram after inversion the whole picture right here because it's going to be very complicated to see what's happening. Just basically draw a new picture just like I did it here. Literally all and all are the same points but I redrew the picture to see what's happening. So I'm going to redraw now what's happening you would have to start with the center of inversion A, which is all, okay, place it there. And we know that circle K1 and K4 go into non-central lines, okay, but we have to figure out what kind of lines these are with respect to each other. For example, I'm going to draw one line, L1, is that good? K1 goes to a non-central line. I'm not trying to be precise, okay? I'm just trying to keep the shape of things. What is happening, yes? yes. Now, for K4, I have to draw another non-central line here, okay? So is this line good, L4? Yes? Should, should the line perhaps wind up being, being parallel? Should they? Let me repeat. Um, Mike? Oh, gosh, I remember. So Mike suggests that these two lines actually should be parallel in our new picture. Why is that? Um. What, what bothers you with this situation if they are not parallel? So argue by contradiction. They would cross each other. They would cross each other, so let me cross them. Okay, there I cross them. Let's call this point X. Yes. So what's what's wrong? Well, that's a problem because the circles only touch at point O, right? So right. They should be able to touch again a second time. Right? That's right. What is your name? Paul. Paul says that because the original two circles intersect only in one point, which happens to be the center of inversion, and in no other point. How could their images acquire another point of intersection? Because if they indeed intersected somewhere here, apply back inversion. You can apply it forward, or apply it once again, you'll end up with the original picture. Right? So line L1 is going to go back to circle K1. Line L4 is going to go back to circle K4. And what should point X go to? It should go to a point that lies on both of those circles, but there is only one such point. It's this point here. Can point X go to the center of inversion? Why not? Uh, one? Because they touch each other once. Um, if they touch twice, uh -huh. that means that the circle is one inside the other, or they touch. They intersect twice. each other yeah. twice. That's yeah. right. That's right. 
So if this point x indeed existed, right? When you apply inversion back, it should lie on both of those circles. So in fact, those two circles would look something like this, yes, with point x like here and point o there, right? But what I wanted to get across is the following. After inversion, it can't happen accidentally that point x is going to land on the center of inversion. Remember what we talked about the center of inversion? Can we apply inversion to the center of inversion? Where would it go? It would disappear, that's right, into off to infinity. And if I imply inversion back, it should come back off from infinity to itself, right, so to speak. No other point from our plane can go into its place, right? Okay. So in fact, what Mike suggested is a lemma. And let's um, write this lemma, which means basically there is no such point x here. So let's write it down. Um, let me leave this space for the true picture. A lemma. And I'm actually going to draw this in a picture. I don't want to say many words. I have two circles that are tangent at the center of inversion. Okay, so you have chosen the center of inversion to be their tangency point. <coughs> After inversion, these two circles become, become two parallel lines not passing through the center. So after inversion, the picture is very pretty. It looks like this, two parallel lines. So that's Mike's lemma. Let's write this here, Mike. This is how mathematicians get their theorems in history. Okay, so I promise we're going to get in groups and work on this. I want you now to start with what we just discovered about these two circles, okay? draw their images as two parallel lines and the center of inversion, and then draw where the other two circles will go onto that picture, okay? So I will start you, and you will finish the picture. There is L1 and L4. There is the center of inversion, which stays right there. We're gon not going to do anything to it. Where are the other two circles on this picture, right? Because K2 and K3 somehow have to get mapped into some circles, right? So, let's see. Uh, I see a very nice group here, another one here. Come on, talk to each other. Okay, that point would become some other point, right? So you're telling me that these two circles will go to some other two circles, which just draw them for me. Two and three. Yeah. Uh -huh. this, this circle. Because okay, I didn't there are not. This. Okay, this is L1 and L4. They are going to become a non concentric circle, right? Really. That's like picture number three. Okay. So, 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 Okay, but I want you but to then, actually draw them on this picture. But then do we know where they actually are? That no, you don't. Okay. I mean, you can actually I mean, do like, it by hand if you want to, but you don't need to. We, all we care is about the relationship between the different shapes, the general picture. So we can just draw the two non-centric circles anywhere? Anywhere, but they're... Oh. There is something yeah, that there won't be any two non circles. Well, that's what I meant. Like, are they going to be out here? Are they going to be in well, here? Well, let's see. What do, do you know? start with? You start with two circles. Do they share a point in common? Yes. yes. What would happen after inversion? Oh, well, they intersect. No. They would yes. have a line? No, no they're going to intersect at that point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would there be another point of intersection? 